In the last video over differentiating exponential and logarithmic functions. And so this is our application video. An internal agency determines that the number of individuals of an endangered species that remain in the wild t years after a protection policy is instituted may be modeled by this formula here. N of t equals 600 over 1 plus 3 e to the negative 0.2 t. And we want to answer these questions. At what rate is the population changing? When is it increasing or decreasing? When is the rate of change of population increasing or decreasing? And what's the interpretation of that? And then last, what happens to the population in the long run? So I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can come up to the answer with these on your own. So focusing on part A, at what rate is the population changing at time t? Well, we see that code word there of rate, and we automatically know that rate means derivative. So our first job is to find the derivative of this function. Um, you can use the quotient rule, or since I just have a constant in the numerator, you might find it easier to convert it by using a negative exponent and then just having to do a chain rule, whatever you feel is more comfortable for you. I'm going to go ahead and do this chain rule here. So I pull my constant of 600 out in front. I multiply it by the power here. So there's my outside of my chain rule. And that is times negative 1. I keep my inside guy the same. I subtract a power. Now I need to multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of 1 is 0 plus 3. I can pull my power off. The derivative of e is just itself, e to the negative 0.02t. But then I actually had a separate chain rule inside that. So now I need to take the derivative of the inside of this one. So it is negative 0.02. So there is two chain rules. The first one is my inside here with this power. And then the second one was my inside of the E. Okay, let's see if we can actually simplify what's going on here. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, all of this is to the negative 2. So let me move that down to the denominator. So I have 1 plus 3e to the negative 0.02t squared. And then everything else is in the numerator. So let's see if I can multiply all of this. I have a negative 1 times a negative 0.02, so I know my answer is going to be positive. So I have 0.02 times 3 times 600. And so that all gives me a 30. And then, of course, I still have this e to the negative 0.02t. So there is our simplified derivative. Now, if we want to figure out where this is increasing and decreasing, our next step is to solve this where it's equal to 0. I know I can basically eliminate my denominator. So all I need to figure out is where my numerator is equal to 0 in itself. Well, maybe you notice something here. Maybe you don't. Do you keep on working? That's fine. I can focus on each of these. I can try and isolate this by dividing by 36. And then I would take natural log of both sides to get rid of my e. And so basically, I would have negative 0.02t is equal to the natural log of 36 the natural log of zero. And hopefully this is definitely where you catch on. You know that you cannot take natural log of zero. It's impossible because it's not defined there in its domain. And that's what I was hoping you to catch on here. I know that E can never be equal to zero because E is not defined there in its range. 
So actually, our derivative will never be equal to zero. So now we have to think back to how to answer these questions. The first question, at what rate is the population changing at time t? Well, that was just this guy here. My derivative, so this is the answer to the first question. And when is it increasing or decreasing? Well, how do we answer that if we don't have any critical values? Well, we just look at basically an empty number line. This means that our graph is always going to be increasing or always going to be decreasing, which hopefully we should understand because when we look at the graphs of exponential functions, they're typically always either always increasing or always decreasing. So all we need to do is we need to find one test value to plug into this here to see whether we get a positive or negative. I like to pick t equals zero because that's easy to work with. So if I find n prime of zero, on the top I have 36 times e to the zero. I know that's guaranteed to be positive. On the bottom I have one plus three times e to the zero squared. I know that's also guaranteed to be positive. So my number line is guaranteed to be positive everywhere, so that means it is increasing everywhere. So my second and third question, when is the population increasing? It's increasing everywhere from negative infinity to infinity. And when is my population decreasing? And the answer here is never. If you don't trust yourself, you can always graph this and confirm that you have a complete increasing graph.